What's up, Serial Heads? Today we depart from our regularly scheduled Saturday morning program for a special video about this new Loki Charm cereal box. I assume most of you have heard about this disastrous promotion by now, but if not, let me give you a brief recap. Now, a little over a week ago, Lucky Charms posted on all their social channels about this new Loki Charm special edition box that they were selling to promote the new Loki Disney Plus Marvel TV show. Here's the launch announcement video for this campaign. Heart stars and horseshoes, clovers and blue moons, unicorns, rainbows, and tasty red balloons. Lucky Charms! You're mischievously delicious. <laughs> At the end of that video there, you can see it tells you to head over to mischievouslydelicious.com to order a box of your own Loki Charms starting on June 9th the same day that the Loki TV show premiered. So you head over to that site and you find out there'll be a pre-sale starting at 9 a.m. Eastern time for people who crack the special encryption code. And then the regular sale to the general public starts at 11 a.m. Eastern time that day. So it gave people a couple days to prepare and many people cracked the pre-sale encryption code, which was L1130, I think. And if you crack that code and put it in, you got to be one of the first 1,000 people at the front of the line for the pre-sale starting at 9 a.m. that Wednesday morning. That means you were guaranteed a box before they opened it up to the general public to sell the remaining 2,500 boxes at 11 a.m. Oh, and by the way, the cereal is just Lucky Charms. They didn't add any new marshmallows or anything special. It's literally just the box with the cartoon Loki on the front. But as we all know, the Marvel fandom and the Tom Hiddleston fandom is real, so the demand was there. Now as for the Loki TV show, well, I really can't speak to that. I haven't watched it. I don't plan to watch it. I'm sure the fans are loving it. I'm a fan of the classic Marvel comic books, but that's pretty much where my fandom ends. You've surely seen the Marvel comic books in the backgrounds of these videos. And as some of you know, I'm a TV writer and I wrote for a Marvel Netflix show a few years ago, but I'm not really into the whole Disney Marvel cinematic or television universe. If I was a kid, I'd still probably love it, but I'm old and I don't have children. So that's entertainment clearly not made for me. Anyway, fast forward to Wednesday morning when you could log on and buy yourself a box of these new Loki charms and it was a disaster. Clearly they didn't protect against bots because even the pre-sale customers couldn't get on and get a box that they were supposedly guaranteed. Then when the sale opened to the general public at 11 a.m., you just kept refreshing the website over and over, but nothing changed until suddenly they let you in only to reveal that they were all sold out. Then you head over to eBay and see that resellers are selling boxes of this stuff for upwards of $100. And you can check Lucky Charms Twitter and Instagram pages and see there are hundreds of comments from unsatisfied customers. People were really, really annoyed and rightly so. Now, General Mills did contact the pre-sale customers to apologize and let them know that they would be fulfilling their orders and sending them boxes. But the whole thing was just a huge disappointment on so many levels. Now, I make cereal videos for y'all on YouTube and I post on Instagram and make TikToks. And so over the years, the cereal companies have been generous enough to send me some cereal boxes from time to time. And so once again, General Mills was kind enough and generous enough to send me one of these Loki Charms promotional boxes. And I really am grateful. I never expect to get a box or feel entitled to get a box. So whenever I receive them, it really means a lot to me, which is great for me, but it's still unfair and sucks for you if you were a fan and wanted to get a box of these Loki charms. But since I was lucky enough to get one, let me share it with you so you can live vicariously through watching this video. So here's how it arrived in this box that looks like a briefcase. You open it up and there's the box inside. You can see it says Loki streaming June 9th on Disney Plus. And if you take the box out here, you can see there's some blue lights in there that kind of made it look like it was glowing. This briefcase is kind of supposed to look like the briefcase the Tesseract comes in. So here you go. Here's the front of the box here. You have Loki on the front, or I think maybe that's just Lucky dressed like Loki. Anyway, like I said, it looks like a regular Lucky Charms box. It has the same marshmallows there. It has the Loki logo there instead of Lucky. And then on the side of the box here, they have Tom Hiddleston as Loki. And then the other side here, they have a regular Lucky Charms box. But here's the thing, this isn't even a real cereal box. Seriously, it's not a traditional cardboard cereal box. It's printed on some thick, glossy cardstock that they formed and glued together to hold a family-sized bag of Lucky Charms inside. Now, it's a high-quality print, don't get me wrong. It's smooth and sleek, and I'm not sure if you can tell, but it's definitely embossed and has a little three-dimensional feel to it. But when you open the box, the top was literally sealed with two pieces of double-sided scotch tape. Now, I assume this is just a quick, rushed, mocked-up version they sent out as a promotional box to us cereal influencers and to news and media outlets. And the real box that the pre-sale customers will receive will be an actual cereal box. I mean, I hope so. I can't imagine General Mills will send out this janky box to paying customers. I'm sure it'll just be a regular-sized box of Lucky Charms that looks like this, but just as an actual cereal box. But we don't know for sure yet because those customers haven't gotten their boxes. So if you're thinking about going to eBay and buying a box for 100 bucks, I'd hold off a little bit until the pre-sale customers start getting their boxes and posting pictures online. But let's be completely honest here. This whole thing is pretty terrible, right? 
We don't need cereal companies to do limited edition cereal box sales like their exclusive sneaker drops, which are also terrible, by the way. Just make enough for the demand. And if you have more demand than you expected, then just do another print run so that everybody who wants one can get a box. Now the hope is after this disaster, cereal companies will have learned their lesson and they won't do these super exclusive limited runs again. But we all know that's not the case. Because for them, it wasn't a disaster, right? They sold all the boxes, they got all the buzz they wanted for the promotion. They don't care if people are reselling them for hundreds of dollars. They don't care if you got a box or not. They don't care about you at all. I feel bad for you. I don't think about you at all. They know that by creating false scarcity, they drive up interest and appeal for the collectors, which in turn drives up notability and desirability for the brand. And that's all these marketers really care about. So what can we do about it? Nothing. It's too late. We've lost this game a long time ago. Look, you can tweet at General Mills, you can write to General Mills and complain, but it'll fall on deaf ears. You can take political action like starting a petition or contacting the Federal Trade Commission's Consumer Protection Bureau, call up their marketing divisions and tell them how stupid these false scarcity campaigns are, but they're not going to do anything because these companies aren't breaking the law. Are they being unethical and amoral? Absolutely. But they're acting within the legal boundaries. Well, then let's change the laws. But unfortunately, these bills are written by lobbyists who are paid by the corporations to protect their interests. And maybe you can elect better and more responsible politicians, but for the most part, their campaigns are funded by these same lobbyists and corporations. There was a window when we still had a chance to come together to fight and demand that our leaders create a fair and equitable society for the citizens of this country and the world. But that window is closed. Capitalism and corporations have won. We the people have lost. The end of the human species and the destruction of our planet is inevitable. But as we inch closer to that impending doom, we can still enjoy the small pleasures of life, like eating a bowl of processed oats and sugar while watching a stupid, vapid Marvel Disney television show. Stay crunchy.